Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Sprouting University slash Bowtie Sober Guy podcast. We got a great show today. And if you guys didn't tune into the last one, be sure to check it out. We talked about the first two parts of the Bowtie recovery step method. Uh, for, for those of you that do not know, this is Will. Will, welcome back. Peace. <laughs> uh, and I should say, welcome to your own channel and your own uh, podcast. <laughs> so, for any of you guys that are in recovery, you know about the steps. And Will has crafted his own uh, condensed version of the steps. Last week, we went through B and O. If you can quickly refresh everyone on that, like what are the, the, what's the B and the O? Absolutely. Um, and it's funny that you say B and O, right? Like B-O, like know, body right? owner, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, totally. But... <laughs> But yeah, gl- great to be here and glad to have everybody watching again and listening uh, when we're on the podcast. Um, yeah, Bo- Will, the Bowtie Sober Guy, and we went through a bunch of my story last week. So if you missed it, please uh, go back and watch or listen to that. And as Joel had said, I've got a six-step recovery program that is an acrostic for Bowtie because as being the Bowtie Sober Guy, everything revolves around the Bowtie. And just a real quick recap on why the Bowtie – um, long story about why I was why I'm called that, but really the bow tie is a metaphor. And the metaphor is you've got an ordinary ordinary piece of material, right? Like a regular tie or a bow tie. But the thing is, it's cut in a different shape. Just like you and I, just like our businesses, our professions, we all have uniqueness to who we are, right? But what takes that bow tie and that piece of material and turns it into a bow tie? Well, it's the knot. Right. And it's the same thing in our lives, in our businesses, in our in our relationships, our careers, all those different things. We have those knots, those challenges, those obstacles, those setbacks, those trials, even those traumas that we face that I believe actually we can then turn them around and untangle them and tie them into a better knot, creating a beautiful life filled with fulfillment, happiness, joy, serenity, all those things that a lot of us are looking for and even purpose. So I've created the six-step framework, the Bowtie Blueprint. The B, and again, it's acrostic for Bowtie, the B stands for our beliefs. And our belief systems and our mindset control so much of our behavior, our action. And I have a whole wheel of behavior that I talk about in it, um, where we talk about our beliefs, create our thoughts, which create our feelings, which create our actions, which then produce our results, which then either reinforce or change our belief patterns. So We talked a lot about beliefs and how important they are and how in my program, you literally can restructure your brain and rearrange those things in your brain to think differently. Um, So that's the B. And then the O is really, are you open to change? We all say that we're open to change, but are we truly open? Have we hit that place in our lives and our careers and our business where we're saying, you know what, there's something more and we're really open to taking the steps necessary because it's some work to really make those changes. And that's what the O is really open. So that's the B and the O in both yeah. And just so you guys know, we both smell great. All right. I'm wearing some <laughs> YSL. So no BO here on this podcast, but I, I agree with you hundred percent. I, I love that. The, the, the openness is so important. And when I right. coach people, I tell them it's, it's for, like you're going to succeed at this if you want this. It's not if you need this. It's right. not if you need to get better. It's if you actually want it and are open to doing all the work that it takes to get clean and change your life. A lot of people, unfortunately, aren't there yet. And that's okay. <laughs> if you're, you know, you're watching and you're not, trust me, it can take a long ass time. Uh, we both, Will and I, had yeah. to, you know, get knocked on the head a few times <laughs> before we finally <laughs> realized, okay, maybe this isn't <laughs> the way. Um, I got robbed a lot of money. I was dealing, dealing weed, dealing uh, substances. And uh, after I got robbed about 10,000 bucks, I was like, you know what? I'll just do this as a side thing, right? <laughs> like, I still yeah. wasn't willing to, to, to face it. So, uh, Will, let's uh, dive in. And guys, if you want to uh, d- uh, learn a little bit more about the B and the O, hop into the first stream. It's on both of our channels and you can check that out. Uh, let's take it to the WTIE. What is, uh, take us away, man. So this is really, you know, the first two steps were really about looking at and determining if we're ready to make that change and we want to. Really now when we start getting into the W, this is really really where the work really starts. And W stands for, of all things, witness, which is an interesting word. And when I think about witness and really what we do 
is we look at our lives. We truly go back and witness all the things that have happened in our lives. And we did part of that when we looked at our belief systems and our belief patterns. But now we're truly going to look and say, okay, what are the things that I'm afraid of? Fear is amazing at what it does in our lives and how we allow, we allow fear to control so much of our decisions, our thoughts, our patterns, our reactions, the choices that we make around fear. And so we look at that and we say, what is it that I'm fearful of? You know, I'll give you an example of that that relates to my, my journey in recovery. You know, I was truly fear fearful of living without alcohol because I didn't know I had lived with it since since I was 16 years old and used it as a mechanism to deal with life. And all of a sudden I was going to say, I'm taking this away. And that mm -hmm. was huge fear and fear of relapse was a really big thing. I remember looking back at my inventory, which is what witness is really all about. We're going to inventory our lives, but we're not going to just inventory the negative or we're also going to inventory the positive. But we're going to witness. And I thought, of, I'm like, what if I relapse? Because again, as I shared last week, I spent five and a half years trying to get sober. Mm -hmm. And so I was, well, and I shouldn't say I continually relapsed. I really relapsed on sobriety because I spent <laughs> way more time drinking. But, <laughs> but you know what? I was, that was that fear, real fear, you know, and in relationships, are we afraid? Afraid that we're going to lose someone. What is our life going to be like if we lose someone? Finances. What if we lose our job? What if our business doesn't work? What? There's all these fears. And, yeah. they turn in, and then we have resentments, which you hear a lot of the, a lot of times in the recovery circles are the res resentments. And so in yeah. the witness stage, we are literally going in and we're going to write down all those things. But one of the things I think is really important that I learned in recovery is to make it balanced. Because you know what, although I had a lot of negativity and negative thoughts about myself and my life and all the things that were around me, I really had some good things in my life also. And yeah. so we keep that balance and we witness to all of those different things and we truly write them down. We go through a whole exercise. I've got a whole thing that people go through and write down all those different things. So uh, willingness, yes, very important. <laughs> and you know being able to look willingness to look at ourselves right, right i know right. willingness isn't the w but just have, coming back to the openness in a way so right. i know for me i was unable to see myself in any sense mm -hmm. of the word and I could see that other people saw myself because they would get awfully annoyed at that at certain moments <laughs> <laughs> And I just had no awareness, man. <laughs> no awareness of of who I was. Uh, and meditation really helped me open up to that. And mm. getting sober too, because I started I started to see like, oh, like every time I behave a certain way, it's going to have a consequence. It's going to have a reaction from whoever I'm behaving towards. And that was a big awakening for me. Mm. You were talking about fear. Well, what are some ways that you? notice fear come up in your life and how can you catch it before it spirals into the head and then into action? You know, it's such a great question. And one of the interesting things about that, as we talked about last week, um, you know, I have that step zero, which is awareness and you just alluded to that. And one of the things that I live my life trying to be much more aware of where I am in my own head. Because I have a lot of stuff that can go around in my head a lot of the time. And, and so I, I try to live in this constant state of awareness. And I don't know if I don't remember if I explain this. I'm, I'm writing a book. And in the book, each chapter, I'm going to end with what I call aha moments. Mm, nice. Because we all have those aha moments, right? But aha has a significance to me. And really what it means, to, means for me is awareness heightens awareness and i think think that that's so important so when i look at fear i'm trying to always look at say what what am i fearful of you know i started my business again after being in corporate america for a long time in most of my career and started my business and there's a lot of fear around that and fear around where are the clients going to come from i've got a lot of things to do i've got to do this i've got to do that and what if it doesn't work and i mm -hmm. actually have a track worker failing in trying this before. 
where I've got something in right. my head that says, oh, you know, you did this before and it didn't work. Yeah. So but what I have to tell myself is I'm a different person today and I have different resources and that I just have to take one step at a time. I don't have to eat, as they say, the whole elephant at one time. I take one bite at a time. And, and a really easy exercise and something that I do with my clients is I say, okay, write down some of the fears that you've had in the past that didn't come true. Mm -hmm. And what's really interesting is all of a sudden people start writing things you're like, oh, yeah, I used to think that, but that never happened. Oh, I used to think that, that never happened. Oh, I used to think that, that never happened. Because science will tell us, not me, science will tell us that more than 90% of all the things that we fear never materialize, mm -hmm. ever. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, it's, gosh. I, I had a fear come up this morning and I was kind of stuck in that paralysis phase where analysis, I was trying to analysis is paralysis. And it's just, I didn't have the experience. I'm like, shoot, should I do this or this? And I went back and forth, back and forth so many times. And I finally made a decision and I'm like, ah, oh, that was the wrong decision. Just uh, instant regret. <laughs> but I don't know if it was the wrong decision. And I think uh, like how you were saying, it's, it's almost like PTSD. We just, you know, maybe we didn't, we tried to do something a certain way in the past and it didn't work. I think right. I see that a lot of times with people that try to get sober, but like I tried before and it didn't work. I made it a month and I failed. So they almost, almost have PTSD around that and they're afraid to try to get sober again. So like, oh, what if I get to a month and I fail again? And how do you coach people to like break through those patterns? And so, so just reframe it, like literally reframe it. So you only made it 30 days. Okay. You made it 30 days. So what if the next time is 31 and maybe ah. it's not, maybe it's yep. not, but that's okay. You, you now have a frame of reference to work off of. And, and yeah. I am all about reframing all of those things. Um, and I, I feel very blessed in the fact that I have a mind that works that way, mm -hmm. but, but I think we all can do that. It's just the framing that we take to something. So if we don't, <laughs> I remember someone telling me something years ago, and it, it's, it kind of relates here, but when you get a diagnosis from a doctor, do you take it at face value? Yes and no, because right. if, it's a, if it's a bad diagnosis, I always get a second opinion. Mm -hmm. When I was diagnosed with cancer about two years ago, prostate cancer, I had a urologist that I was working with. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? I didn't like the path that he was taking me on. It wasn't him or anything like that. I was yeah. just referred to someone else and got a different opinion. And it was reframing where I was at with that diagnosis. We can do the same things with fear and mistakes and decisions that we make. Just reframe mm -hmm. it. Oh, reframing. Is there an R in bow tie? There's not, but no. if there was, we, we can add it in there. <laughs> <laughs> isn't that funny like you got that you got a doctor's opinion which we won't dive into that anymore but you got a, another doctor's opinion and yeah. uh, if you're in recovery you 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 might catch that metaphor but yeah it's a i love that reframing it's uh, i've had to do that a lot as well on this journey like hey you know you didn't mess up you are learning and something just as simple as that like you are learning and next time you're going to be able to do better because you have the experience right. you have the reference we got another art reference once you get that reference and the reframing you're you're unstoppable man so i freaking love that um so so let me more? let me jump in let me jump in here too because Please. i think that we we forget we think that mistakes are a bad thing yes and two of my favorite examples of that about something that happened that was um not the way intended you know everybody's heard the example of benjamin franklin inventing the light bulb and i don't know if the numbers are right that he tried ten thousand times and finally the last one worked i don't know if that's true but i do know that as a scientist he tried and he tried and he tried and he tried and as a venture he tried and he tried and tried till he found the one thing that worked and he always would say i just learned a way that didn't work yes and then what am I yes which is so true right okay that didn't work yeah. great now i can I, i've got i've got more knowledge Yep. And then the other great example that I think is unintended, unintended consequences that can happen from mistakes are amazing. 
So, oh, what's his name? Percy something. His last name, I think, is Percy, the inventor of the microwave. Mm, okay. So the inventor of the microwave was a scientist that was actually testing microwaves. That's what he okay. was working on. He was testing microwaves. Huh. He had a candy bar sitting there. The candy okay. bar melted. He's like, huh. <laughs> He invented the microwave. Dude, that's crazy. That, that we live with every day. Yeah. Because of a mistake and an unattended consequence, unintended wow. consequence. Man. That, uh, mm, thank, thank you, Percy. <laughs> What's his name? Percy? Percy Harvey. <laughs> I think his yeah, last name is you, Bert, Darcy Percy, I think is his name. But. Darcy Percy. Okay. Wow. I, man, I mean, yeah. What an empire he's developed, right? right. <laughs> he's changed the course of, uh, I mean, there's a whole food industry around the microwave. <laughs> exactly. so. <laughs> Fucking, that's a hell of a mistake. Don't you wish some of your mistakes could lead to that? <laughs> I make a mistake. And they can't be. You don't know. <laughs> right, right. I mean, me becoming a drug addict led to this channel. So it, it's a huge mistake. You know, disappointing my parents, dropping out of school multiple times led to this. And it's just absolutely like, there's always a silver lining. I think that's a great, absolutely. Uh, great frame as well. Yep. Yeah. Oh man. So, so much, so much we could talk on that one, but how about we move on to the T now, the T of the bow tie. So the T, T is closely tied to the W. So in W, we, okay. we sat down and we witnessed, we did this inventory, we went through the process of really looking at those things that are impacting us still today. Or maybe, maybe we don't even know they are, but they, we have these thoughts about them. So T stands for testify. We had witness, and now we're going to go to testify. And don't testify. think of as this is a very legalistic process, even though I have legalistic terms in it, they just are good with bow tie. Um, okay. <laughs> but it's testify to the truth Ooh. because what is the truth? Mm -hmm. uh, I had, I had horrible thoughts about myself as I shared. I mean, I spent four days in a cycle because I was going to take my own life because of mm -hmm. how I felt about who I was as a human being. None of that was true. None of it was true, but yet I believed it was the truth. So in this step, we literally take all those things that we just wrote down in the witness state in the witness step and we start testifying what is the truth but there's a lot of things that we talk about with the truth not only what is really true about me but we also have to start looking at in those things that we just witnessed what is the truth about the things that i have to take responsibility for <laughs> there was that there was a point this was a true turning point in my recovery not only my recovery but also in my life and everything that I do today was when I started looking at the truth and what do I have? What is my personal responsibility in this situation, in this feeling, in this emotion, in this relationship? Where can I take responsibility? Hmm. And that all of a sudden, what I realized when I went through this process was I was blaming everyone else in every other circumstance for where I was at. Mm -hmm. And what I realized was I had a part in a lot of those things. Yes. And I had to testify to myself, to that truth that, you know what? I didn't have a great childhood. I didn't have great parents. And I had huge resentments towards my parents and my family life and my, my whole childhood. And what I realized was that wasn't fair. I was playing God. And I wow. was hold, holding them to an expectation that was not fair. Wow. <laughs> they did the best they could with what they had. Right. Because I wanted more and thought I deserved more. That's, <sighs> I should hold them to that. No, uh -huh. that's unfair. And I had to take responsibility for that. Gosh. Well, first off, it looks like we're going to create a new system here with the letter R. We have, we now have responsibility. We have whatever the other ones. Uh, I love it. Yeah. And yes, dude, that's such a huge part of recovery and learning to own own your shit. However you right. want to say it, take your take part, take ownership. And I appreciate you saying that you had a, you had trouble with that. And you know, I think now, like when I, when I see people that are struggling with that, I can have compassion because I'm like, I know what it's like to just be so resentful. There's another R resentful at the world for the situation, the situations I'm in I'm, that I've been facing. And as soon as I started taking responsibility as well, things started to change. 
I started to feel empowered. I started to mm. be able to have good things happen in my life instead of negative things. So what happened for you when you started to take responsibility? What were those? Ooh. Well, the first I had just truly one of the biggest aha moments in, in my life. And I saw myself as being very selfish and self-centered. Mm -hmm. The other part of the step that I think is important, and I haven't really touched on it. Oh, I haven't said anything about it at all is, is really in forgiveness yeah, because that's, yeah. that's the truth, right? Is, is I had to learn to forgive those that hurt me. Mm -hmm. I had to learn to forgive myself. And because I had all these unfair expectations of other people and unfair expectations of myself. And I had to really go through and, and spend a lot of energy and work on, on what does forgiveness look like? Mm -hmm. And then not only giving forgiveness, but also accepting forgiveness. Oh. which was so, so hard for me because again, I was learning and, and recognizing there's another R for you recognizing <laughs> how selfish and self-centered I was in so many things. And here yeah. I thought that I was, a, I, I was a good person. I had a servant's heart, but I did it for all the wrong reasons. We talked about that again last week, but I had to learn how do I, accept forgiveness from others, but also how do I forgive those others? And I've gone through a lot of work in, in forgiveness and it, it opened up my heart to so many different things. Wow. Wow. So powerful. And I was so unable to forgive myself. Like, good God. Like, I was <laughs> like, I, I'm going to carry this around as my badge of honor until the day I die. I, and that, I, I forgot about how difficult that was to actually allow life to forgive me to the people I hurt, forgive me. And it's only, it's, it's crazy because not accepting that forgiveness is in a sense like self-centeredness as well. It's yeah. like, it, 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 not like an evil way, but just it's like, no, no, I remember. It's, no, 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 I can't accept that. Like, no, I'm, you don't know. Like I'm so bad. And they're just like, dude, I forgive you. <laughs> like you're good. Um, uh, and what you said about the earlier as well with like the God thing, right? Like God, uh, God, I can't remember exactly what it was, what you said, but it was so, it was so powerful. I think part of recovery is learning to accept forgiveness from God or yeah. higher power, or Buddha, Jesus, however you want to put it. Um, why was it so difficult for you to accept that forgiveness? Do you think? Well, you know, the big thing was, and I, and I shared this is how I saw myself. I really saw myself as unworthy. Hmm. And, and and again, that was my journey. And so what when I started looking at that and really understanding that I am not God, and I think that's what I had said a few minutes ago or a minute ago, was you know yes. what when I realized that I, I I wasn't God, I didn't know better and my higher power I call God again that's up to you guys to choose who that is to you. But I had to realize there was something greater than me. And that, that, that entity I call God was in control and I had to give up that control. And so forgiving myself though, was really in understanding. One of the lessons I learned in, in forgiveness is forgiveness doesn't necessarily mean we're letting that other person off the hook. We're just taking their power away from what it has on us. And that was a really important lesson for me, especially for forgiving myself, because when I was holding myself down, not forgiving myself, I was again playing God. And mm. I was again being selfish and self-centered and self-seeking. And I had to let that all just go and say, you know what? You're a human being, just like every other human being. And I want to share a quick story if I can, because there was something that happened. I don't know. I was probably two or three years sober. And it was around my birthday. And I'm, I'm a big fan of birthdays. Like, I think birthdays okay. are amazing. <laughs> and, and because to me, it's it's the day that, again, God breathed life into me and said, you know what, I'm going to put you on this earth and put me mm. here. So I, I, there's a special, special day. But then I realized just, I don't know, a handful of years ago, he did that knowing, knowing that I was going to make the choices I make, do the things that I did and live yeah. the life that I chose. And he said, you know what? you're still worthy. 
you're still worthy mm. of existence and I'm going to breathe mm. life into you. Yes. Yes. And we all are every single one yep. of us are worthy. Uh huh. We're all worthy, man. Mm, I just got goosebumps. I'm worthy. You hear that guys? I'm worthy. <laughs> I, bro, yeah. that, that's beautiful, man. Um, I had a talk with my sponsor recently, if like a, a week ago, and I was really in like a dark night of the soul. I was like, dude, like, uh, I forgot to, to save for my taxes. <laughs> I'll, I'll just share with you guys bluntly. And, um, uh, I was just feeling like so worthless, like, dude, like, God, only like losers don't pay their taxes or all these stories. Right. And he's like, well, question, man. So, so to me, it sounds like you're beating yourself up for, for having a bad memory, right? You didn't intentionally, <laughs> maybe subconsciously you did, but like consciously you didn't choose for your taxes. You just forgot to save. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh shit, I owe taxes. Right. I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, well, who gave you your memory? Mm, like, so good. Oh. I guess God. Yeah. And he's like, well, then I guess God wanted you to forget your taxes. And I was like, Oh, dude. Awesome. Like I felt so much, so much relief. And it was, it's just like coming into that belief that you're right. Like higher power has a plan for you. And that took me so many years to figure out God, it's <laughs> coming on. Let's just say it's taken over seven years to finally accept that maybe God does have a plan for me. And what happened you know i accepted that truth and i and i and i was looking at my reality too it's like i'm still going on dates i'm still having good conversations with friends no one's told me to basically fuck off you're not worthy anymore <laughs> and so, so evidently i'm so worthy even though i over taxes and it was just like such an awakening moment for myself well we we have such a tendency to want to judge ourselves um, and we're our harshest critic and I know that, and I, I, I will say that about myself and, but I, I, again, learned to forgive myself and accept me for who I am. And guess what? I'm fallible. I make mistakes. I'm sure I've made, actually, I can think of a couple that I've made today. It's going to happen. Nice. Yeah. But it doesn't change the fact that I'm a worthy human being. It doesn't mm. change any of that as far as who I am as a person. Mm, okay. Ooh, you're just, ooh. How do you, <laughs> as you can see, my brain is trying to process that. There. How did you finally come to acceptance around that? Just like, because because for me, I'll just say, because for me, like if, if having perfectionistic tendencies, having like some OCD tendencies, um, I find mm. that like if one thing isn't like, like in place, it seems that I can't like be present or focus on all the good things that are happening. It's like that one thing is like, just starts to weigh me down. I, I see you laughing, which I can guess that means yeah. you can relate a little bit. Well, I'm a control freak. I, I am. I, raise okay. your hand if you're a control freak. Absolutely. And I get it. And you know, if you saw my house, you saw my office. I mean, I'm a tidy person. I, my, my, my joke is that I um, have the perfect level of OCD because it keeps me really organized, but it doesn't make me too crazy. <laughs> that's hilarious but, but you know i want people to hear this because i think this is really really important i really really do and and you know what joel if you can mark this spot in the podcast maybe put it in the the description this mm -hmm. point because i want people to know i i'm a really i have a lot of peace and serenity and joy in my life today my life is not perfect it is really far from perfect. Do I have great things in my life today? Absolutely. Do I have challenging days that I struggle? Absolutely, 100%. It still happens. So I want people to hear that, you know what? I've done a lot of work, and just because I have, and because I'm coming across probably as someone that's really positive and happy and joyful and motivated and high energy. Yeah, you know what I am, but that doesn't mean my life is perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And so just know that just because I got sober, life didn't get perfect. Just because I live this way doesn't mean my life is perfect. I still have mm -hmm. challenges. I still have obstacles. I still have trials. I still have trauma responses to things that happen that I snap. Oh, I still okay. do. But it's okay because 
I'm okay. Wow. I'm going to have to listen to that one a couple times. Well, that, <laughs> that was deep, man. Uh, I, for, I just want to say, I appreciate you, you sharing that with all of us because I think a lot of people can hear that. And it's, it's something that I think takes a lot of maturity to just mm. accept that you're a fallible human being, man. Yeah. I'm, I can't, I, I'll be honest. I'm not there yet. I still want that, you know, order. I like how you said that control freak. It's like, I'm just, I was being a control freak. So that's, and especially with <laughs> relationships, right? Like I like having control in my relationships where I don't, and it's not that I, I, I need control. I just don't like feeling out of control. And so I, I appreciate you saying that, man. Like, even though you've done all this work, even though you have a business, even though you're, you know, in shape, you still make mistakes, you still mess up. And I, I don't know how good that can be to really believe that fully, but I, I think that can be a lot of freedom. <laughs> I still go into those phases, right? Just like not, I'll make a mistake. And it, and that's what I think confusing is sometimes like life can feel perfect. Like everything's in order. Like I've just, I'm, I'm in so harmony. And then you just like, you know, you step, you step your toe basically. And it's like, right. fuck, I fucked it all up. God damn it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it, it's just remembering that like, even if your life is perfect, you're going to stub your toe. Even if life is perfect, yes. it's not going to be perfect at some points. And oh, what a, what a relief. I'm going to definitely make a short out of that for our channels. And I think that'll be really, really good. Uh, that, you know, I marked it. I sent you a text there. Awesome. Uh, beautiful. Beautiful dude. Oh, love it. Love it. So let's get, we're about halfway through here, which is perfect. Obviously perfect we have two more to go. So let's dive into the eye. How many more R's can we get? <laughs> so I'm sure there will be a few. Uh, um, so I, I and E are closely tied together too, but before we get to E, of course, we're going to go through I. So I stands for intention, intentionality, hmm. and it's living with intention. And this is one of those things, again, it's tied to the awareness, right? I have to live intentionally. And one of the things that is so important that I've learned, because how many of us, and I still do this, don't get me wrong, I still do this. How many of us are having a conversation with someone else, are listening to this podcast, and already thinking of three other things that are going on in their lives, <coughs> right? That's Raise your not hand. living with intention. <laughs> mm, oh, man. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm somewhere else all the time. And I bring myself back. <laughs> yeah. Because I have to be in the moment. Mm. Because this is all we have. I can't control. or Well, I don't have any control over what has already happened. It's already happened. I can't do anything about it. Now, if I have to make decisions based on what's happened, I need to make amends. I need to offer forgiveness. I need to do something with the past. Then I need to do that in the moment. But I can't change it. The past uh, okay. is the past, right? Right. And again, being a recovering control freak, I want to control the future. <laughs> Which we all but, know is possible, right? <laughs> right. But what I've learned is I can't. What do I have control over? What do I truly, what do we all truly have control over right here, right now? Nothing but the right here, right now. Uh, and, and so that means living intentionally and being involved in what's going on in the moment. Yeah. Not what happened yesterday, not what's happened tomorrow. One of my willisms that I love is that today is our tomorrow's yesterday so make it count mm -hmm. yes. we don't have tomorrow we don't have yesterday we have today we have to make wow. it count so that our tomorrow's yesterday becomes memorable yes that sounds like a michael scott office quote for some reason but <laughs> <laughs> i could just see him saying that like guys <laughs> just doing something so stupid and just be like hey guys don't worry tomorrow's today is tomorrow's yesterday uh i love that dude intentionality right being being aware being present and this is something that has been a huge gift of recovery i think and especially in relationships with other people in recovery i've noticed that very very evidently that the people that i associate with that are in recovery that have you know gotten off substances uh they're a lot more present in conversation mm. they're very they, they take time to focus on you which i really appreciate they listen they'll 
you know, it's just not all about them. And <laughs> I really, I, I mean, that's something I'm just so grateful for. And, and vice versa, I get to give that to others as well. It's not just all about Joel and Joel's day. I get to show up for other people as well. And I think that comes down to your eyes, that intentionality, like you're just focused, like, okay, this is the person I'm talking to. I'm going to focus on this person. Done. Of course, like our minds will wander here and there. And, you know, you have to come back, like you said, like, like in meditation, your mind wanders and you bring it right. back to the present moment. So it, it's definitely a practice, but just getting to experience that from, from other people has been very nice. And, and I, it's, it's a hard thing. Don't get me wrong. It's, it really is. We're in a, we're in a world where we are bombarded with information from everywhere. I mean, it's crazy. I heard someone say recently, and I don't remember the exact dates and the amount, the exact amount of data, but I want to share something they said. And apparently there's been all kinds of research that up until like 1990, there had been some astronomical amount of data created in our world, right? Data points mm. that have been created in our world. And it's something like a million gigabytes or something. And it was some like a million, million gigabytes. I mean, some enormous number, right? Of data mm. that we've created by our human race. Jesus. What they said was that we create that same amount of data in today's world every three days. Oh my God. Oh so think about that. We are bombarded with all these different things and our attention spans have gotten shorter and shorter and shorter because of all of this, because of all the electronics, because of the things that we carry, because of our connection to each other via electronics, mm -hmm. that we are just bombarded by these. And so I encourage everyone in this step, you just, we have to stop and just be intentional about what we're doing, what we're saying, what we're listening to, the decisions that we're making, the choices that we make, what we're putting into our minds, what are put, we're putting into our bodies, the people we surround ourselves. Be very intentional about how we live mm -hmm. and only put those things in that empower you. Like, I can't tell you the last time I watched the news. Good, I did. And I, the news is the news, right? But I can't watch. Like, I don't even know what's going on in the world. I know there's an election nope. in the United States yeah. this year. But I, I just because, you I know, know what? Especially, <laughs> especially the 10 o'clock news. I don't want to hear, hear all the negative and then go to sleep. No, no. That, that, sub, that programs in your subconscious mind while you sleep. Right. You don't want that? No way. No. I, I knew we had a connection besides recovery. <laughs> I also, yeah, give zero fucks about the news. I think I've watched it once in, in the last seven and a half years, almost eight years now. And it was only because uh, I think one of the guys was getting uh, into office and my dad was he's like really into it. And I wanted to see his reaction, but like, I can only do it for like two minutes. I'm like, this is too boring. <laughs> I have to go, I have to do something else. <laughs> I, life is short. So uh, I'm with you in, intentionally coming, focusing on what you're doing. And the, the good thing guys is that this sounds like overwhelming or kind of scary. And Will, I, I'm curious if you found this as well. You start to enjoy it. Like, I used to love being a loose cannon. Like, whatever is going to come out of my mouth, like, hell, let's have fun, right? Once it's, I started saying stupid shit, it wasn't fun anymore. Right. And now I really like being able to choose what I say, choose how I behave. Mm. It's It feels like yeah. a superpower. Well, you know, I believe we all are worthy and we all matter right? Mm -hmm. When I'm thinking about something else, when I'm having a conversation with someone, I am putting myself above them. And I never want to do that mm -hmm. because we are all equals. We are all in this, in this thing we call life together. And I know more important than you are. So when we can have open, honest dialogue and really listen to each other and respond to each other in a way that shows intention, our world will change. It truly will change. One thing I want to state, because you said you, you you would ask or said before you asked the question was, um, this seems overwhelming. And I want I want to address that real quick because you're right. It can be. Now, keep in mind, I'm just sharing what the steps are. They're put in order for a reason, just like the 12 recovery steps are put in order for a reason. 
You don't yeah. start at I, you don't start at E, you don't start at that. You start with B. Well, you actually start with A and then you go through the steps because it's a process. And so I want to encourage everyone. Don't think, oh my gosh, I could never be that way. You know, I think that same thing. Yeah. Well, first of all, I didn't even think I needed to think that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe for other folks, but not for me. <laughs> right. So, so, but I've learned, you know what? And so just let's, let's pay attention to each other mm. and love on each other and be there and listen and encourage and support each other. Mm -hmm. yeah, relationships are one of the most beautiful things going off that will just and when, and when you can show up for another person that's when those deep connections are made i i think there's few people in my life before recovery that i could do that with and it was only because we had so much in common that we became like one so a meshman yeah. code fantasy. the only people i could do with <laughs> I was very good with that I do. <laughs> and now it's like i can do that with someone i don't really like or somebody that has very different views from me. Somebody that's way older, or then well, Will's becoming younger every time he does uh, social media. By the way, so <laughs> <laughs> he's he's evolving greatly. <laughs> um, <laughs> some of my best friends now are in their forties and it's or late thirties, and it's just because you know I think naturally you just learn how to become more present and as with age, right? Right. Um, because of recovery, I've gotten to learn that a little earlier and. You just become like the people you, you, you attract, your vibe attracts tribe. That's kind of the, the way I like to put it. So mm, I good. really only attract with and relate with people that are also, you know, focused on themselves and um, being of service to others and just have that awareness, right? Coming back to step zero, that right. awareness. And so I freaking love it, man. And uh, that's awesome. So let us dive into the final step here. Letter E. So yeah, the letter E. So um, letter E, as I said, is tied to the letter I with intentionality. But it's really, to me, this is probably one of the cornerstones when it comes to living every single day, and it's living with expectancy. Now, you've heard us use the word expectations, and I want to make sure yeah. that people understand there's a difference between expectations and expectancy. Okay. When I was in, I had read this book prior to going to treatment, um, but I read it again when I was in treatment. And it's one of the things that I think is just, it's an amazing dialogue that this guy wrote in this book. And it talked to, about the difference between expectation as an, an expectancy. And it's what I've kind of built this whole step on. But li And I'll share with, it, with you what it is here in a minute. But it, living with expectancy is truly letting go of the outcome and knowing that no matter and trusting in the outcome, no matter what happens, no matter if it's good, mm. bad, indifferent, if I like it, I dislike it, I hate it, it affects me good, negatively, it affects me positively, letting go of all of that oh. and knowing and trusting and having the faith that all of it is what is supposed to happen. And that's living in expectancy. Mm. So, I'll share with you, there's a book and it's a movie now too, and it's called The Shack. Hmm. And it's a really, it, it, for me, it, it's a, it's a life-changing book. It's a life-changing movie. And if you don't know it, I'll give you a quick synopsis about a man, a, a father who his daughter's abducted and, and killed and they never find her. And he, and she, they find her dress um, actually in the shack out in the woods. Uh. He then has this experience where he is invited to the shack again, and it's in this on a little note card in his mailbox that there's no, it was in a snowstorm, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's from God. And he's invited to go to the shack. He goes to the shack and he literally meets, he has this experience of meeting Jesus, the Holy Spirit and God in the wow. shack over a weekend. One of the dialogues that God has with Mac is the, is the um, character's name. Is, is this difference between expectations and expectancy. And I lived in a world where I had expectations of everyone, including myself and of God. And what, they, mm -hmm. what he talks about in this is that expectations put these framework around relationships, framework around thoughts, guidelines and 
really these these um, rails that creep it together and create expectations of what's going to happen, what they're going to do, how, what I'm worth, all these different things that come in and are structured and are truly the knots. Now I'll go back mm. to bow tie, the knots in our lives. Mm. When I can let those go and live with true expectancy that no matter what happens, and I have to be willing to accept and trust and have faith that no matter what happens, it's what's supposed to happen. And that's living with expectancy. I like this one, Will. <laughs> I really do. I, li I like this one because that's the first thing I thought too. I was like, oh, he's talking about expectations. I thought expectations, you know, they say expectations are premeditated resentments. Um, but no, mm -hmm. that's not what it is. And I, no. it's, I think it's really cool because it incorporates, it almost like sums up all the steps, right? And especially those first few, which is like turning it over to, to life. That's a really hard one. And right. this doesn't really, well. you trust that even if I make a mistake, which we talked about earlier, right. even if I don't do the right thing or that it's all going to work out and that it's, it's kind of meant to be in a, in a way. I felt a lot yeah. of peace when you said that. Just a lot well, of and, and what people, people, and I get it. I have struggled in my own recovery journey. I've gone, I've had to walk through some pretty significant life changing things. Like I, I got a divorce after almost 28 years of marriage. I yeah. was diagnosed a couple years ago with prostate cancer and had to have surgery. It was pretty aggressive. Just had to have surgery a year ago. I've had, I've had challenges in my professional life. Hmm. And, and you know what? I just had to realize that those are all just part of my journey. Again, they don't define me. I'm still a worthy human being. I still have so many things to be grateful for in my life. Those were all just part of it. Now, I'll say there are times it sucks and it's hard and I'm yeah. sad and I'm scared. Mm -hmm. But I've learned to let that go and not take me. I shared with you guys last week that I spent four days in the cycle because I was going to take my own life. And that was my emotional bottom. And I still remember how I felt that those days i still remember it very very vividly and i lived most of my life that's why it's easy for me to remember i lived most of my life feeling that way mm -hmm. and now i can walk through literally life-changing events and let go of the outcome because i believe that that's what's supposed to happen again it doesn't happen overnight and i still have to work on it every day but I've been able to to get to the point where it's easier today than it was years ago. Sure, sure. I, I'm curious, Will, what happened in the end of that movie? I like I'm gonna look it up anyway after, but <laughs> I I just watched it. Um, my girlfriend and I just watched it. Uh, I don't know, maybe a month ago. And I mean, I'm, I I cry. I, it's just wow. it is because the, there's other scenes in the movie too that I. If you're in recovery, I encourage you to watch the movie because. Um, there's a scene where he meets with, and I don't even know who she, but it's this woman, um, this fourth woman that's in there about judging others and about being the judge. And mm. she wants to put him in the seat of being the judge okay. because he, he was living, well, I was living like him. He was living like me. It's a movie, but, um, where I was judging everyone and everything. And that's, that's playing God. I mean, it's me playing God. And she puts him in the seat and says, you can get in the seat and make those decisions now. Wow. And so I, again, it's a great movie. It's the book again, I, the book always goes deeper, right? So it's a great book. I have two copies of it right back here on my shelf as a oh, matter cool. of fact. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. I'm definitely going to watch it. And thanks for that recommendation. I mean, it's got the guy who played it in Avatar. Oh, it right? is. Yeah. Yeah. He, he's the guy that played Sully. Um, oh character. it is now that you say that yeah it is yeah and then you got octavia spencer which is uh you know she's hilarious so yeah this looks like a i mean great cast first off um, yeah it's it's phenomenal oh awesome man dude yeah let's let's dive into this a little bit so that's oh, expectations man it's 
I can get so lost in and so fearful of the outcome sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes not. Sometimes I'm very in that flow state where I, that's how I like to look at the flow state where you just know whatever's going to happen is going to be worth it. Sometimes there gets that place where it's like, it goes from being like, you're living in the gray, you know, whatever happens. And then all of a sudden life becomes black and white very quick. I don't know why that is. What have you experienced that? And like, what, what's your, been ex your experience around that? Well, you know, one thing I want, my, I'm hoping that people here living with this expectancy and trusting and, and having that faith that everything will happen is going to happen, right? People are like, well, then I don't have to do anything, right? And that's mm. what you're kind of talking about, the black and white and, you know, moving from gray. And 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 I'm not saying it doesn't mean I don't take action. I have to take action every day. I wouldn't be on this earth if I wasn't here to take action and to do something. Mm-hmm. And so when I talk about this, it, it's letting go of that outcome and accepting it for what happens doesn't mean that I don't have to make those decisions. Some decisions are way easier than other decisions. Absolutely. And, but we still have to get to that point. And sometimes it's very gray and muddy. And it's like, gosh, I just don't know. I just don't know what to do. And what I'll yes. tell you, this week I've been, in some of my other channels, I've been talking about decision making and there's an Eisenhower decision matrix and that kind of thing. And if you want to learn about that, follow me on my other channels. But we have to make those decisions because even in decision, when we're sitting in that gray area, I don't know what to do, go this way, go that way. When we're sitting in that gray area, that's a decision. And I want you to hear that. That's a decision you've made not to make a decision. All right, I don't like Will anymore. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I was a big fan until he said that. <laughs> this is it, babe. Unsubscribe. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, continue, He's continue. kidding. Don't unsubscribe. <laughs> For the people that may resonate with this message, <laughs> continue on. <laughs> But it's true. Oh, yeah. It's true. Yeah, it's it's true. It's not indecision is not making decision. And I think the fear comes from wondering in those moments, what if I make the wrong decision? Yep. That's where that anxiety comes in. And from what I'm kind of putting together with all your steps, there is no one, there is no wrong decision. Two, everything will work out okay. And like I part of me almost looks at it like life has a plan for if you choose this way, this way, or this way. And each way is going to be okay. Maybe is that a good way to put it? Because, because like cons actions have consequences. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You know, one of the things that people um, and we're and I'm glad we're talking about God a lot more today than we did last week. Um, but we have free will. God gave us free will, and people are like, "Well, why is there so much bad in the world?" Because we're all human beings, and we have free will. Right. So that means we get to make decisions and those decisions will determine our path. And God knows our path. I don't. And I can second guess myself all the time, but it doesn't get me yeah. anywhere. N nowhere. I just have to learn from those decisions. And hopefully the next time I come across something else that's similar to that, I can use that experience to make a different decision, better decision, maybe the same decision. I don't know. I mean, I made the mm. same decision over and over, over, and over, and over every day, drinking against yeah. my will. I'm putting booze in my bottom, bottom right? Or body, right. right? Your bottom. Oh, that's a different kind of <laughs> ingestion of I put it everywhere so. it would go. <laughs> so... so <laughs> We, we just have to understand that it's okay. Mm -hmm. And and letting go of the outcome, again, I'll, I'll reiterate this. We still have to take action. We have to. Yeah. Let me give you an example. And this is something that props up for me still. And, and not all the time, but enough that I recognize it. Is when you own your own business, you're not getting a regular paycheck. Right? Yep. And, and there's a lot of fear and I have expenses in my business that no one else is paying for, mm -hmm. right? I am paying right. for this. And the only way I make money is in my keynote talks 
in my coaching and in my paid workshops. And so I have fear and I had this pop up even just a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. Mm, okay. Now this pop up, I'm like, oh my gosh, you know what? And those same little negative belief patterns started coming in from the outside, coming in and saying, oh, you know what? You're just going to fail again. You tried this before. It didn't work. You got all these things going on. What if you go into debt? What? And I'm going down this huge rabbit hole, right? I'm feeling sorry for myself. Oh, I got to go find a job. I got to do this. I got to... Instead, what I realized is I said, you know what? I have done this before. And you know what? I failed. But it wasn't a failure in the fact that I was a failure. What I did mm. didn't work. That's all it was. That's all it is. Wow. Dude. And so today I reframed that and said, you know what? What if? And I went down the rabbit and I said, what if? And I sat down and I wrote, what if, what if all these things that I'm portraying in my head and thinking about what if they all come true what if i lose my house again because that's happened to me in my life where i lost my house what if my car is repossessed what if all of a sudden i have to go and live with friends because i don't have any income what if all these things that i'm thinking could happen happen guess what i've been there i've lived it i've done that already nice. and it's okay because what if none of that happens <laughs> and I am traveling the world three years from now, giving keynote talks to big groups of people, changing lives, making more money than I thought I'd ever be able to. What if that happens? <clears throat> what, if? what if I'm coaching and impacting more lives than I ever even thought possible because mm -hmm. I'm doing things like this? And I have to just let go of the other stuff. Mm -hmm. Man, that, there it is, man. That's the answer. Because every everything I thought was a mistake and I regretted, I'm so grateful that it happened exactly the way it did. Everything. <laughs> everything. And just like it, it's so funny how we can be so hard on ourselves when it's very something that's very important to us. If I'm at the gym and I'm like, should I do back squats today or should I do chest press? I don't really care which one I choose. Like maybe I should have done chest press. Okay. But I, I go home and I feel good anyway. And I think that's a great mindset to incorporate into learning things. Right. Uh, you know, if you mess up on a date, for example, or mess up with some girl, right? One, maybe it's higher power saying she wasn't the one to not that there is a one or whatever. We're not going to get into that, but maybe this isn't a person that I wanted you to be with. So you can move on. Right. And if you hadn't learned this, someone better is going to come right around the corner, right? And if you hadn't gone through it, you wouldn't be able to behave in the way that's proper to attract this person. So it's just, that is the the essence of learning. And I appreciate right. you, you know, giving that example, right? Like what if, um, yeah, it's not what a bad if? thing to say. There's a great Marvel show called what if with, <laughs> awesome. you know, and every time they win because it's Marvel. So <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> think your life like this one man so god we've got a couple of comments here first off well this guy right here yo yo what's up brother uh not quite sure who you are but this guy uh, i've seen you before so appreciate you coming on and he also says i love bow, bow ties passion man mm, i do too. thank you you got some thank great passion you. well and thank it you. really i think it's going to take you far and you know i wouldn't be surprised i'm not going to say what if you do it i'm going to say when are you going to do those keynotes <laughs> when so it's a, it's a when, unless you like, you know, die or something, but which could happen. I, 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 I never could. say guarantees because there's always a chance it doesn't work, but that is for a different pocket. We're not going to go down that dark rabbit right, hole. Right, right, right. I think, I think uh, for today, man, this has been beautiful. So expectations, let go, trust the universe, trust the process, trust that everything that's happening is meant to happen and you'll find peace. Uh, basically that's the result, right? You get to have relaxation, peace, no stress in your life. Right. Well, and so yeah. I want to make sure it's, and the E is expectancy, not expectations. And so living yes, with yes. that expectancy is just yeah. letting go and having trust, having faith that everything is going to happen that's supposed to happen and it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. Be okay. Got with that note, guys. I think that's a great place to, to start wrapping up. So I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Uh, 
number two for Will's podcast. So if you guys haven't, uh, ask you to go over and subscribe to his channel. Uh, Bowtie Sober Guy, you can hit the, his name in, in the title if you're on my channel. And uh, give him some love, man. He's going to be talking about a lot of different things. I really like where, you know, I hope we get to do a lot of collabs going forward. I'm sure we will. Uh, I'm yeah. more of the how to get sober. Will's kind of how to live in sobriety. I think that's kind of maybe the, a bit of the distinction there. So a lot of you guys get sober and you don't really know what to do. Check out Will. Will's going to give you a lot of advice and, and tips and tricks. And he's gone. And uh, he's back. <laughs> on how oh. To... <laughs> oh, that was weird. You disappeared. Yeah, it must have just been like a connection thing. But anyway, he's going to come back, come come in sometimes, leave, and then return with some with some great wisdom. Follows Instagram, too. He's been putting a lot of work into that and uh, getting that off the ground. So, uh, Will, I'd love to do some more podcasts with you going forward. And absolutely if you guys if you guys watching have anything you want us to talk about any maybe specific things you have for will will also does a solo podcast so if you want have any questions that you want will to cover like personally like without me in, in the shot <laughs> feel free to <laughs> shot, shoot that in there <laughs> we could just set it up as a will podcast um but uh yeah man why don't we wrap up we'll go through can you go through the this what each step is or each letter is one more time yeah, absolutely. Um, so again, it, it's the bow tie living blueprint and B is our beliefs, the things that we think about ourselves and they create this whole wheel of behavior that I that I talk about. O is openness, openness to change, opening openness to being different. W is witness. And we're going to truly look at what has happened in your life and where you have fear, where your resentments, where you have difficulty in relationships, all these different things. T is we testify to the truth. What is the truth in all this? And we talk about forgiveness, making amends, all of those um, pieces of it. I is living with intention and being intentional about our lives. And E is living with expectancy and knowing that whatever happens is meant to happen. And the last thing that I want to say is, is one of the things, and this is really encompasses all of what Bowtie Living is all about. And it's a way for you to create a new tomorrow by untangling yesterday into a new today. Thanks for having me. I think I need a little weed to process it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so really, we'll get through that. Thank you, Will, for having me. For, for Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As well. And uh, you're very welcome. Uh, guys, for myself, you can find me on Sprite University. Uh, I help people quit weed fast and efficiently. Going to start, you know, I don't want to keep you around forever. I want to coach you quickly so you can move on with your life and start living the life you want to live. And I'm here to just kind of be accountable for you as you go through that couple, you know, month, month and a half of, of maybe some discomfort as you let go of weed for good. So you guys can reach out to me in the description. You can uh, schedule a call for me with me, uh, 20 bucks for 40 minutes, just an intro call and uh, about a price of a couple grams, I think. And really that 20 bucks is just to make sure you show up and you have some skin in the game. I used to do like, well, I used to do like free consults and no one would show up. Like, yeah, <laughs> I would like schedule my day around it. Just, yeah. So I just make sure to get a little bit on the front end and uh, yeah, well, you know, we'll be back. We'll be, with, we'll be back with some more podcast content. And uh, with that guys, we'll see you in the next one. Adios. Peace out.